Everybody, my name is Jen Cushman. I am an empathic intuitive. I am a energy practitioner and longtime Reiki and Huna. And I am also a NLP practitioner and mental emotional release practitioner, master practitioner, and hypnotherapy. So that's who I am. My business is Soulster Magic, and my website is soulstermagic.com. And these are the Magic Mondays that I do every single Monday, and I have been doing them since May of 2020. So that is who I am, and welcome everybody who's here. I appreciate my community. We have built up a really fun community uh, over the time that we've been together. The way Magic Mondays works is that I do a little love and learn lesson. I call it a love and learn. I do a little bit of a lesson for about anywhere 10, 15, 20 minutes tops and on a particular subject of the week. And then after that, I go in and I will do mini card readings for the people who are on here live. Hitomi is my hostess with the most, she's actually my moderator, and Hitomi is taking names of everybody who comes on, and if you would like to be considered for a reading, all you need to do is just say hi in the chat, say hi to Homi, and then she will be the one with her guides and her angels that she will be picking who is going to get the mini reading. It just keeps me on track, and then it allows me to be fully present during the live stream with you guys, myself, and with my spirit team, okay? So that is how things work. I just wanted to get that out of the way and give a refresher for the new people that are on here today or anybody on the replay, okay? Whew, let me take a big deep breath. You guys, if you would like to join me in taking a nice big deep cleansing breath, it helps, it tells our parasympathetic, it tells our nervous system, P for peace. So remember that whenever you need to feel your energy rising or it's out of control or there's st stress or chaos, or you got some kind of news that is upsetting, the first thing, if you take three deep calming breaths where you are breathing in and then you are breathing nice big deep breaths and then you let it out for longer than you breathe in, it actually tells your parasympathetic nervous system to come on board because we literally cannot be in chaos and stress while deep breathing at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna take a big deep breath and get started. So if you want to breathe with me, okay, you guys, you ready? Let's do it. Ah, that feels good. Felt everything calm down, felt my higher self click in, know that my team is here because I can feel them all around me to support me and you guys today, okay? Now, today's love and learn topic is, this is not a woo-woo topic. This is actually a very specific thing that we are taught during our master practice training, during um, uh, mental emotional release. And it is such an important topic for all of us particularly if you are like myself, where in your family of origin, you really weren't taught how to do boundaries very well. So my talk today is on boundaries. It's how to know that it is time to set a boundary and how to do it from a place of loving kindness, how to be able to hold your own space hold your energy, and to be able to set a boundary with someone you care about without having charge. Now, charge means that you are getting a negative emotion that's coming up, okay? You're getting anger, you're getting sadness, fear, shame, guilt. Something is coming up and it is just having a charge because it is something that is related to what happened in the past and we are always growing and changing and becoming new people. So when we are working on our personal growth and development, when things come up from the past, it's just a sign that there still needs to be a little bit of work done. There needs to be healing done. You may need to release the emotional baggage, or maybe you have released the emotional baggage. And now what you're doing is you are learning new strategies. You're learning new ways of being and building new neural networks and new habits to be able to be the person you want to be, live the life you want to live, have the things you want to do, live with purpose. So if you are doing this personal growth and development work and you are doing that chain of events that I just spoke about, being able to set boundaries in a loving and kind way is vital to your personal growth and development. 
And for those of you that are parents, you know that as parents, one of our jobs is to set boundaries with our children, right? That's part of the discipline. It's part of helping them navigate their way in the world. It's part of teaching them that there is going to be ups and downs in life and that, you know, life isn't always cushy. It's not always comfortable. That interactions with people are a way of having negotiations, particularly with the people you love, because you want something and they want something and you are always trying to get your own needs met. So when things are coming up, it's because we're having an unmet need. And so really trying to figure out what is the need that we have and then how do we express that in a way that honors ourselves, without charge and a way of presenting that information and that energy outward in a way that is clear and firm and loving. So if you guys uh, want to do this topic and you're enjoying it today already, or at least you're agreeing with what the structure is, please make sure you put a heart in because I would love to know if you're really on board with this, okay? And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in, even as I'm talking, put them in the chat and I will go back and I will do my best to answer them, okay? Okay, so to begin my boundary talk today, I wanna give you a very recent example because one of the things that I find is that when I'm able to tell a little story and give you an example of my own life, it just helps clearly illustrate where I'm trying to go with what I'm trying to say, okay? So here is a very recent metaphor that helped me know that what today's topic is, okay? I have a very dear friend. I love her so much. We have been longtime friends, 15, 16 years now. And she had a situation this weekend where she needed to move out very quickly, okay? And, um, you know, keeping her privacy, her love, all of those things, because I love her so much, she just needed to move out quickly. Now, my girlfriend is a plant lover. She absolutely, she has a lot of investment in her plants, not just her plants, but the pots that they're in, all of the things that go on. She really puts a lot of care and love into her plants. And she texted me and asked me if I wanted her plants. Now, I love plants. I used to have plants a lot before I had children. I would have a whole house. I had like a room in my house that was kind of this passageway that had been, had been closed in and it had beautiful filtered light. And it was like a jungle in there. I had so many plants in there that I would keep and I'd love them. And I really had that. And then I became a mom and, you know, I was a bit overwhelmed being a part-time working mom and a brand new mom. And I was taking care of my son and my baby and my plants just started to die off one by one by one. I just was either overwatering or underwatering and I just wasn't able to keep myself and my husband and my baby <laughs> alive along with all of these plants. It just wasn't happening. So I went through a very long period of my life where I didn't have plants anymore. And then about five years, I was like, okay, my kids are grown up. My daughter's, you know, grown up. I'm at a point in my life where I want to start caring for living things again and started, started slowly bringing the plants into my life. Now, I am not a natural green thumb, you guys. I'm not a good gardener. I'm great about creation energy. I'm great about planting them. I'm not so great about the transformation energy with gardening and plants. And I'm definitely not good with the completion energy. Okay, so I'm good about buying the flowers, doing the stuff that I need to do and, you know, toiling, you know, pulling the soil over, feeding it, caring for it, deadheading it. Not the greatest. Okay. Just getting that out of the way. So my girlfriend texted me, asked me if I could do the plants. And I really had to think about it because one of the things that's going on in my life right now is I am really realizing that I have too much stuff. Now, 25 years as an artist, I have great stuff. I have my own art. I have art from friends of mine. I have very cool things that I have collected at the Vie Grenets in France, um, on my travels in London, at, you know, Piccadilly um, Square, Market, you know, Portobello Road, all of those things. I have some very cool stuff. And too much cool stuff is still too much cool stuff. And I've really made it a point that I need to start releasing and letting go of things and really letting them get back into the universe because I'm starting to feel cluttered and hemmed in. 
And so I wanted to help my friend out, take the plants. And I also really have want to get rid of the plants. So hopefully you can see my dilemma, right? And hopefully you guys can see in your own life situations where may this happen. You have a very dear friend and you love them and you want to support them, or you have a partner um, that you want to love, support a child that you want to love and support, grown child, most of us, right? And we want to love and support. And yet we are also at a phase in our life and a point in our life where we are needing to make decisions for ourselves. And so you can see that this is where a boundary had to come in. And also knowing my friend so well, I needed to be aware of my emotions and also be aware of her emotions and that she is handling a tough time right now. And she's doing it with as much grace and dignity as she can possibly do during this very challenging time. So she just wanted to give me her plants because she wanted them to be a good home. I wanted to help her out because I know how much she loves these babies and I'm in a space where I can care for them right now. And I also don't want to keep them. And I also know my friend well enough to know that, you know, she's perfectly happy rehoming them. But in reality, she's looking for a surrogate plant mom, right? She didn't say to me, hey, would you consider being a surrogate plant mom for me while I'm going through this really hard time? only because she didn't have the mental capacity to think that way at the moment while she's in emotional chaos. And so this was a really great opportunity for me to notice how I was feeling. Got to tell you up front that it kicked up a little bit of stuff, right? So it kicked up some things for me. And I had to do the emotional work to figure out what is mine, what is hers, what's going on, what am I really thinking here? Like, this is a minor thing. This is not a first world, you know, this is a first world problem. This is not a big deal, okay? And still, there was a little bit of garbage that was in there, and I needed to figure out what was the gunk. So fortunately, I was able to quickly figure out the gunk, and I was just chatting with a friend of mine. You know, our girlfriends are always great for holding space for us as we figure out our gunk. And so I realized what was going on there. And I realized that what happens is I wanted to be there for her. I wanted to hold space for me to lighten up and not have so much stuff in my life. And I wanted to be able to say, yes, I will take your plants for you. And here is my boundary. I will do the best job that I can to keep your plants alive. If it becomes until you can collect them and get them again. If it becomes too much for me, I will text you and I will ask you if I can give them away and rehome them to a good place. Also, you may know that I have a history of overwatering or underwatering my plants, so they may die. You have to be okay with the fact that they may die. And I will do the best job I can that when you get settled, your investment can come back to you and that I am just a surrogate plant mom. Okay, so there was a conversation I had to have there and I didn't want to use too many words. She was not in a place for me to have a big discussion about this. She just needed it to be handled and taken care of. Okay, and I was able to recognize. So all of those words I just told you were not the words I used with her. What I really said to her was, yes, please bring your plants over. I will be a great surrogate plant mom for you. And as soon as you are on your feet and you know where you are, please let me know if you would like them back or if you would like me to rehome them at that point. End of discussion, end of story, right? We all got our needs met. I was able to be there for a friend of mine in a way that I could, right? And I was able to stand up for myself and make space for what I am trying to accomplish in the future. So I'm telling you the story because I was very proud of myself, you guys. In the past, before my breakthrough sessions, before my personal growth and development work, I would not have been able to be so clear because I would have been in my garbage. I would have been in my, oh my gosh, I need to take care of a friend. I need to be there for, and you know, put myself on the back burner because I wanted to be there in support of my friends because that's one of the habits I would do is I would make everybody else's life comfortable at my own expense 
and I would be uncomfortable in the process. And then I would feel used or abused or underappreciated or undervalued. And then I would hold that all up inside of me. And then, you know, something minor would come up between me and that person and I would blow. And they would be like, where did that come from? Well, it came from the fact that I wasn't being honest with myself and I wasn't being honest with them. And I didn't even know what I was being dishonest about because I didn't know what I didn't know. Okay. So that's really what I want to talk to you about. And that is the story of how I did navigate this in the moment. You know, I was able to navigate life through my new lens, through this new, healthier lens of mine, of my understanding, my training, my living, my being and doing this. Okay. And hopefully you can see something of yourself in there. You can see an opportunity that you may have missed with a friend or a loved one, or you can see an opportunity that in the future, you might be able to take a beat and take a moment to really check in with yourself before you respond. And so you can respond more intentionally instead of just going through unintentionally. And then that also brings me to the next thing that I say a lot, which is remember energy flows where attention goes, energy flows where intention goes. So if we are doing unconscious manifesting, unconscious creating, and we are just running from our stuff and we're just doing it unconsciously, then that is where we are putting our attention and that is where the energy is going to flow. Now, if we run our stuff, but we do it much more intentionally, then that's the energy that we're going to put out. And that is the flow of energy where the intention goes. And I'm telling you right now, it makes a world of difference. Being able to know yourself, know what you want, and then be able to effectively communicate those things to the people that you love in a place of strength and a place of Pono, you know, then you are going to be able to navigate the world more authentically, more powerfully, more aligned and more authentically. And it's such a beautiful thing. And are we going to mess it up? For sure. You know what I mean? We are human beings. We are living our divinity. We are living our humanity. And that is part of our human being. Sometimes we are not going to be so slick with our words. You know, sometimes we're going to ball. You know, me, you've seen, you guys have seen plenty of tears from me. You know, you will see me have a misstep and you will see me show up from a place of strength. That is life. Okay. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So how do you know that you are setting a healthy boundary? How do you know that you are, you are coming from a place of strength? You are communicating your needs in a way where there is no charge, okay? There is not a charge there. There is calm, centered, centered peacefulness, and you are able to set a loving boundary with another human being who you care about, okay? And say, yes, and, or no, and, or even sometimes no, and that's a complete sentence, okay? Without over-explaining, without too many words, without defensiveness, just, hey, here's my need, here's my desire, here's what I need to do, are you cool with that? You know, get agreement, get agreement from them. If they come back with defensiveness, <clears throat> if they come back with a charge, then that means that, you know, their stuff got kicked up and they need to do some personal growth and development work. Okay. So you remember, you know, again and again, we can control how we react. We can't control how another person is going to react. Okay. That is really what it is. So being able to set firm, loving, kind boundaries is huge. And it is, it is such a game changer. So I would love to hear in the chat right now, I would love for this to be a two-way street if anybody wants to get involved. You know, how do you feel about setting boundaries? Do you have a story of how you set a boundary and you want to share it publicly? I mean, you have to share it publicly and you want to put it in the chat do that and allow the community to give you a high five, allow you to get some feedback of knowing that like you did it, you know, 
we are, remember that quote that I love, the Ram Dass quote that says, we are all just walking each other home. So each Magic Monday that I do, I am here hopefully being able to hold the little light post up, you know, and being able to just light the way for anybody who's behind me and then hold out my hand and help walk home. Last week on Magic Mondays, when I was talking about my little Lilo and, you know, having to make that decision, you guys held the lantern for me. You held the hand out and you helped walk me home. And so I appreciate the fact that you were able to do that. Okay. Okay. So that is my love and learn today. I'm about right on time, 1133. 